awesome, a nurse log. I love these things, they're so beautiful. But what is a nurse log exactly? Well, essentially it's a fallen log in a forest that serves ecological function by recycling nutrients within the forest ecosystem, as well as providing home to future generations of forest. Come on, let's start from the beginning. So when a tree falls in the forest, regardless of how big it is, it's kind of a big deal, you know, it's an event. And the first thing the tree does as it falls is it's going to bash out the undersoil. So it's going to take out smaller trees, bushes, different things, and depending on how it fell, you know, um, sometimes the soil will get upturned and that'll turn the soil. In this case, this is a western hemlock that, you know, snapped in a windstorm. So this is known as wind throw. So it finds its way down to the forest floor, it bashes out the understory, and this is known as a disturbance event. And what this does is it creates gaps in the canopy where this hemlock once stood and was taking up the light. It's now allowing more light to reach the understory, giving different things like these little hemlocks here, some vine maples over there, a new opportunity to get more light, to grow faster, hardier, and stronger. While at the same time, this log finds itself on the forest floor, it's giving different species an opportunity to take advantage of that. Now as time goes on and our fallen tree endures the elements and becomes more waterlogged, the first stage of its decay is infiltration by mosses, lichen, and fungi. And this can often take between 5 and 10 years to really even become noticeable. On the inside of the log, you know, you have fungus that spread their mycorrhizal roots, breaking down the heartwood, the sapwood, the cambium, softening all that lingon and softening the wood, whereas on the outside you have mosses and lichen that start to attack it to break it down. So after years of buildup, the moss will form these thick mats that retains moisture levels, um, softens the bark, and eventually forms a bit of a pseudo soil that's going to allow other plant species to take root in the future. Oh, look at this little hemlock. <laughs> Alright, now this is where things really start to take off for a little nurse log. After enough time has gone by and enough moss has formed on top of it, you know, seed cones and fruit to other species that like to colonize these areas of disturbance begin to germinate, and they do so in absolute abundance. Here in Cascadia, that's everything from bushes like Salal and Huckleberry, like this one here, to other conifer trees like western red cedar, Sitka spruce, and western hemlock particularly. Because western hemlock is such a shade tolerant and resilient little species, they tend to grow, you know, all over these nurse logs into these abundant numbers, but despite this, there's only enough room and resources for one or two to reach full maturity, so the competition here is fierce. Now let's take a step back for a moment and look at this from a bigger picture, okay? So you might be finding yourself asking, you know, what makes a nurse log such a great place for a tree to germinate, you know, isn't that a little bit cannibalistic? Well, take a look around. Can you imagine being a little tiny seed cone to a hemlock and falling anywhere on the understory here where all these other trees and bushes and ferns and things have already established themselves? It'd be really hard to grow in those conditions. So what a nurse log does is it essentially provides opportunity for a tree to get above the forest floor so it doesn't have to compete as fiercely with other plants for the light and resources it needs to grow. Now with the big logging boom in the 19th century, we're left with far more stumps here on the forest floor of Cascadia than we were actual down logs, and these are known as nurse stumps. They basically function in the same way, you know, giving future generations like these three little hemlocks a leg up above the competition so that they can grow and thrive. So in our early years for this little tree that's germinated on a nurse log or stump, its initial root system is going to find its way through that thick layer of moss, through that softened bark, to gather up all the nutrients and water it needs to establish themselves. And eventually, those roots are going to make their way down along the outside of that log or stump and then into the actual soil where it's going to get most of its nutrients. They lack the capability to break down the heartwood, you know, the, the, the thicker layers within the actual stump or tree, and that's where things like fungus, termites, ants, even little rodents that help break that stuff down um, come in handy to help redistribute distribute those nutrients amongst the forest ecosystem. And then over time as that um, the softened bark from you know, the log or the stump starts to erode and decay, it exposes these roots and they actually form a cool layer of bark that helps protect them from the elements. And eventually these are going to thicken up and strengthen a lot um, to provide a support network for this tree as it continues to grow and while the rest of the log or stump continues to erode away. <laughs> cool trick. So after about a century or two of erosion, that old log is broken down, it's degraded, its nutrients dispersed back amongst the forest ecosystem by the fungus, the, the insects, the animals that have broken it down, and what we're left with are these crazy trees and these suspended archways, these, these root structures that you would have gone down around the old nurse log, then down into the soil, and in this case we have these four big Sitka spruces that were all growing on the same nurse log, that all kind of lay in a row here, and you can see where it would have lied, where it degraded, and now we're left with these cool elevated structures above the forest floor. It's absolutely wild. 
Now these elevated root structures are commonly referred to as flying buttresses, which is an architectural term that refers to those archways and supports on the sides of cathedrals or churches all over the world. And in a way, you know, it kind of makes sense for these trees. I mean, these trees are pretty holy places, you know, they're God's trees. Now over time, these roots are going to thicken up and eventually close this gap, but in the meantime, it's going to get used by foxes, wolves, bears, all sorts of critters who are going to utilize this space as a den. And I get it, you know, it's, it's pretty cozy in here. You are a beauty. When you walk around a healthy, mature forest ecosystem, it's not too hard to find big old trees with buttress bases that show that they were growing on a nurse log or a stump of some kind, just like this big old western red cedar here that's growing on the stump of an old western red cedar. This just goes to show how important these nursing structures are in a functioning forest ecosystem with forest accession. You know, not only do they encourage diversity of species and ages, but it helps recycle those nutrients within the ecosystem to keep everything growing and thriving strong. It's all part of a cycle. Unfortunately though, us humans have a pretty hard time just letting things be, letting nature run her course. So when we see a fallen log on the forest floor or we cut one down, our natural inclination is to get it out of there, turn it into some crappy IKEA furniture, toilet paper, or something else ridiculous just to make a buck. We're basically taking resources from an ecosystem that requires those resources to exist in the first place. Over the past few decades throughout Cascadia and beyond, we've had some pretty shoddy forage management practices, and as a result, we're left with really unhealthy stands of forests like this. These monocultures of super tight, crowded forests with no canopy gaps, little light coming through for little understory, no diversity, nothing laying on the forest floor to allow the future generations a leg up and the resources that they need to grow and survive. I'm not a mathematician, but I know that the more you subtract from the same formula, eventually if you do it too much, you're going to end up with a negative result. And that's exactly what we've got going on here. So as humans, as a species in society, we need to learn to just like chill, let nature do her thing so we can have healthy functioning ecosystems for future generations. Oh, well, what do you know? The old huckleberry hemlock combo, classic nurse log configuration. So, in order to have healthy functioning forest ecosystems here in Cascadia, North America, and really anywhere in the world, you need to have diversity of species, diversity of ages of those species, and a functioning nutrient cycle. Now, nurse logs play an absolutely critical role in all of that in that they provide opportunity and resources for little hemlocks like this to grow up and make a way in this crazy world we live in. All in all, nurse logs are awesome. Dang, what a beauty. If you're enjoying these videos, feel free to subscribe to my channel below or just keep watching to keep learning because the more you know, the more fun you're going to have next time you're outside in nature enjoying it. Sure is rad out here. There's just there's so much green, you know? I've never seen this much green before.